Hello everyone. Flora and fauna have attracted man since times immemorial. The poem that we are going to take today, How to Tell Wild Animals, is also related to wild beasts, how to recognize them. But the poetess Karen Wells has treated these wild animals also in a very gentle manner and in a humorous way. Carolyn Wells was an American poet. She was born in Rahway, New Jersey. In this poem, she deals with many wild beasts and how to recognize them in a very humorous manner. And that humor also is really weird. I am Kapila here taking you on this visit to the flora and fauna that has been created by Carolyn Wells. Before we read the poem, let us have a look at the important words given here. You may pause the video and see the words. Let us read the poem. If ever you should go by chance to jungles in the east, and if there should to you advance a large and tawny beast, if he roars at you as you are dying, you'll know it is the Asian line. Or if sometime when roaming round, a noble wild beast greets you with black stripes on a yellow ground, just no notice if he eats you. This simple rule may help you learn the Bengal tiger to discern. If strolling forth, a beast you view, whose hide with spots is peppered, as soon as he has leapt on you, you'll know it is the leopard. Twill do no good to roar with pain. He'll only leap and leap again. If when you're walking round your yard, you meet a creature there who hugs you very, very hard, be sure it is a bear. If you have any doubts, I guess, he'll give you just one more caress. Though to distinguish beasts of prey, a novice might nonplus. The crocodile you always may tell from the hyena does. Hyenas come with merry smiles, but if they weep, they are crocodiles. The true chameleon is small, a lizard sort of thing. He hasn't any ears at all and not a single wing. If there is nothing on the tree, tis the chameleon you see. Now, if we see the first paragraph, the poetess is telling us how to recognize an Asian lion. She is telling us if by chance you go to the eastern jungles there, if you are moving, you are advancing this, if you are moving forward and you come across a large and tawny beast, a large beast and that is tawny beast also and if that beast roars, okay, then you and the roar is so ferocious, it's so terrible that you feel you are going to die then you should understand that it is the Asian lion. So see, such a weird humor she is presenting over here that if the roar makes you feel like dying, and if you are dying, then you have to recognize that it is the Asian lion. So this kind of weird humor has been presented here by the poetess. So if there are examples asked in the question uh, during the examination or at any uh, test, then you have to write this, that this kind of weird humor has been presented by the poetess. Now, if we see the second paragraph, again, she tells us that if you are roaming around somewhere and if you find a noble beast, okay, and that has got stripes on it, the background of the beast is yellow and it has got black stripes on it, and if that beast eats you up, then this is the simple way of recognizing that the beast is the Bengal tiger. See the weird humor. The beast is eating you up. Then you will be able to recognize that it is the Bengal tiger. So this kind of weird humor has been presented here. If strolling forth, 
a beast you view whose hide with spots is peppered so the hide is the skin so when you are strolling when you are moving forward and you find a beast and that beast has got the skin that is peppered like black pepper is there similarly black spots are there on the skin then and as soon as you see that it is jumping upon you it's taking a leap upon you then you should be able to know that it is a leopard so if a leopard is jumping upon you if it has got black spots on its skin which are like black peppers which have been spotted there on the skin then you should be able to recognize that it is a leopard you will know it's the leopard and now see now no matter how much you roar in pain it is not going to be of any use to you it will not be of any good to you it will only keep on leaping on you again and again it will only pounce on you again and again okay that it is now in the next paragraph the poet is telling us how to recognize a bear so if you are walking around your yard right somewhere in your yard you meet a creature there and that creature comes and it caresses you you know holds you tightly there uh, as if it's going to break your bones then you should be able to recognize it as a bear it's huge and if you have any doubts and you are guessing whether it's a bear or not it is going to give you one more caress and again your bones will be crushed so completely you will be able to know that firmly uh, that yes it is a bear only again this kind of weird humor is here in this paragraph in the next paragraph the poetess tells us that it is very difficult for an inexperienced person to distinguish between the beasts of prey like they will not be able to distinguish between a crocodile and a hyena but people like us who are experienced who have learnt about animals will easily be able to distinguish uh, the hyena and the crocodile hyenas they have got merry smiles on their face and the crocodiles they have tears they weep okay that that is how we are going to distinguish but it will be difficult it will be confusing for a novice that is an inexperienced person Uh, you have the meanings given in the glossary so you can deal with the meanings over there and then while you are giving the explanation you may use those meanings okay now in the last paragraph she tells us that the true chameleon is small and it is like a lizard only and it doesn't have any ears nor does it have a wing and if there is nothing like that on the tree then uh, it is the chameleon on the tree if there is nothing like that on the tree it's the chameleon only like if there is nothing like the lizard and if it doesn't comply with the characteristics or as mentioned here then it is a lizard only okay so so in all the paragraphs she is dealing with different different animals in the first paragraph she is telling us how to recognize an asian lion what kind of a beast it is it is large and brownish yellow in color that is tawny there and if it if you are dying then you should be able to recognize uh, that it's an asian lion in the second paragraph she is telling us how to know about a bengal tiger that it has got yellow background black stripes and again if it eats you up then it's the bengal tiger in the third paragraph she is talking about the leopard that the hide that is the skin it's all peppered like the black pepper is there lying there or somewhere on the sheet similarly black spots are there on the skin that's the leopard and your roaring in pain is not going to help it's just going to leap upon you again and again that's there in the third paragraph in the fourth one it's talking about the bear where are you going to find the bear it will be there in your yard and what is it going to do to you it will caress you and it caresses you it hugs you so tightly that you will be able to understand your bones are crashing uh, and they are crashing into pieces and if you have any doubt again it will give you a harder caress and you'll be able to recognize it then in the next paragraph she is telling us that a novice is confused he is non plus he is confused in distinguishing between animals the beasts of prey but people like us who know who have the knowledge of animals recognizing them is easy for them like we can recognize and differentiate between a hyena and a crocodile hyenas smile and crocodiles they weep they shed tears in the last paragraph the 
poetess tells us about what a true chameleon is, how to recognize it, what is the difference between a lizard and a chameleon. Okay, so uh, paragraph wise, you can easily remember. And you can make a beautiful mind map also. You can draw a tiger, write its characteristics. And then you can draw a leopard and write its characteristics. Similarly, draw the other animals, write the characteristics. And beautiful colored mind maps can be prepared for this poem. This would be really helpful for you all while you will be uh, preparing for your examination. The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, B, A, B, C, C. There are plenty of uh, figures of speech that have been used here. You can have a look at them in the slide. Now, let us do the exercise. Does dine really rhyme with lion? Can you say it in such a way that it does? Dine and lion, they do not rhyme actually. But the poet wanted to give a rhythmic effect to the poem. And that is the reason why he has used the word dine, uh, D-Y-I-N, and not put the G over there to give a rhyme to the poem. And uh, uh, he's wanting us to pronounce it uh, with, a, with the rhythm so that a rhyme scheme is developed there. Second question, how does the poet suggest that you identify the lion and the tiger, when can you uh, do so according to him? So supposing if you're going to the eastern jungles there, then you come across a beast there and that beast is very large and tawny and if it roars so terribly that you are almost dying, then you should be able to recognize that it's an Asian lion. And if you come across uh, a beast that is yellow, having yellow skin with black stripes and if it eats you up, then it is the Bengal tiger. So this is how the poetess has told us uh, that you can identify. So there's a weird humor here and this is how she's presenting the recognition of these two animals. Do you think the words leapt and leapt in the third stanza are spelt correctly? Why does the poet spell them like this? The poet has spelt them incorrectly just to give a rhythm and a rhyme to the poem. Just to give it a beautiful, you know, poetic effect, uh, a singing effect, a rhythmic effect to the poem. That is the reason why he has misspelled the words and often the poets, they take such liberties. And in this poem especially, the poetess has taken a lot of liberties to, you know, change the forms and spellings of the words. And this kind of liberty is often termed as poetic license also. And further in uh, one, one more question, I think we'll have to write that also. Okay, the fourth question here. Do you know what a bear hug is? It's a friendly and strong hug, such as bears are thought to give as they attack you. Again, hyenas are thought to laugh and crocodiles to weep. That is, they have crocodile tears as they swallow their victims. Are there similar expressions and popular ideas about wild animals in your own language? So you must be knowing any such other expressions which you have in your language. Please translate it into English and then you may write if you have heard of uh, any other such expression. Like here they are talking about the bear hug and the hyenas and the crocodiles. Next question. Look at the line, a novice might non plus. How would you write this correctly? Now, this should have been written that, like it can be non plus, okay? That way it should have been written. But here, just to give a proper rhyme to the poem, the poetess has written the line in this manner. And why is the poet's incorrect line better in the poem? Because it's giving a beautiful uh, rhyme to the poem and a musical effect to the poem. So that is why this incorrect line also fits in very correctly. That is the beauty of the poetry. Next question. Can you find other examples of poets taking liberties with language, either in English or in your own language? So if you have read any other poem where you have seen that the poetess or the poet has taken liberties there to, you know, misspell the words like, uh, uh, in, like in this poem, like if you see the frog in the nightingale poem, there also the word on and on and on. There, instead of writing on and on, A-W-N has been used. So similarly, you can also also take uh, examples from any other poem which you had read which you have read previously so you can express that here now the next question is 
much of the humor in the poem arises from the way language is used because very weirdly a weird humor she has created and that humor is because of the language that she has used you know a lot of incorrect spellings a lot of incorrect structures that she has used that has brought the humor the way she has expressed that it eats you up and then if it, if you're dying the road uh, the road is so terrible so such things they have created the weird humor in the poetry here although the ideas are funny as well if there are particular lines in the poem that you especially like you have to share those lines so just now i shared two lines with you if you find some more please do write those now this is uh, all about the exercise we may be meeting in another video with any such interesting humor uh, here it was animals maybe it's something else till then you take care